Tom Wokey, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings to watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence that's available to us in English in forever until one of us bites the dust. Or both of us bites the dust. We've never actually talked about the contingency of what happens when one of us bites the dust, but we assume the other one will just pick it up from there. <laughs> and just go. carry on, yeah. Yeah, ca- carry it on and going on forever. Our main series being Gintama and the other series that we keep saying we will get back to, but we're just waiting for the perfect time, is of course Koroko's Basketball. We'll get back to it one day, we swear. I mean, there's a lot of episodes to cover at once. <laughs> That's why it's been taking such a long time. But today we're going to be talking about Gintama, and we're going to be talking about episodes 239 to 243, uh, which is all the episodes before the Thorny Arc. So let's get right into it, starting with episode 239, which the English title for is, You know those year-end parties where you keep drinking until you've forgotten everything that happened the past year? These are a few things you're not supposed to forget. Let's go ahead, Zen. So there is a New Year's party, uh, and Kentucky gets super shwasted, uh, and he's like looking over in the bed, and there's a there's a lump in the bed next to him, and he's like, "Oh God, oh God, what did I do?" And he pulls the cover off the bed, and it's Atose, and then it cuts to both of them like outside vomiting because the implication is that they fucked while drunk, of course, uh, and then. He's like, I don't remember anything. And she's like, you know what? I don't either. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. He's like, no, I really don't. I really don't remember what happened. <laughs> and then uh, he is like, I'll go talk to Shinpachi and Kagura. But then he's like, no, I can't do that because they give me shit when I drink. And if I go to them, they'll give me more shit about it. So I need to, I need to go someone else. So uh, he bumps into Tama, the android maid, who's like, oh, here's a total rundown of everything that happened last night. You should go, you know, and and uh, talk to uh, Ote. And he ends up there, and she's like, I can't believe you forgot what happened last night. And he's like, oh my god, what have I done? And it's just getting progressively worse. So then he goes to um, the, like, estate of the Yagyu family, Um and then he's like, oh, shit, what? And they're like, oh, great, you're here. You're you're the new leader of the Yagyu after what happened last night. <laughs> and he doesn't remember what the fuck happened, so he ends up running away. Um, and then Sachan grabs him and is like, after what happened last night, he's mine. And then I think they get hit by the monkey whose name is Runny Diarrhea. Yeah. Um, and they fall out of the tree, and he keeps running away. Uh, and he ends up bumping into uh Sukoyo who's like yeah but you owe me 200 million for what happened last night <laughs> and he doesn't remember any of it so he ends up like running away and then he bumps into Hasegawa who's also like we should not talk about what happened last <laughs> night um then he ends up bumping into the other ninja the the Senzo. one that always hangs out with Sachan the hemorrhoid ninja yeah um Zenzo and he's like oh yeah yeah, Zenzo. And he's like, oh yeah, I know what happened. And he's like telling him what happened. He's like, yeah, you left with Otai, and then you left with Kubei, and then you left with Sachan, and then you left with uh, Sukoyo, who dragged you away, and then you left with Hasegawa, and you left for a really long time with Hasegawa, like way longer than everyone else. <laughs> and then you left with um, the old lady, the drunk old lady, and took her home. And then uh, he's like, all right, what do I do? And he's like, okay, well, what you need to do, obviously, is you need to take responsibility. And you need to get serious. And he's like, okay. So he goes to each of them, and he's like, yeah, we should we should be together. We should get we should get serious. But all of them are like, okay. <laughs> and so he goes back, and he's like, this was supposed to scare them off, but for some reason they're all interested. What do I do? And so he's like, all right, here's what you're gonna do. We're, you're gonna use this apartment building that my uncle owns or his father or something. And he's like, and then. You're going to live with each of them in a different room, uh, continuing this this fake relationship, and you can never let them find each other. Uh, And then he's, like, trying to hide it, but then he ends up getting punched through a wall by 
uh, Otai and that punches him into Sachan's room, and then he breaks out and nails the room shut, but then uh, Otai punches a hole in the other wall, which is into Kyubei's room, and then he ends up getting launched through a wall with uh, Sukuyo, and then he gets stuck in there, and so both of them are, like, quote-unquote feeding him through the wall, but Kyubei is just, like, shoving curry up his ass because her weird assistant guy tells her that's what he's supposed to do. And then Sukuyo is like dunky, like like waterboarding him with a hot pot. <laughs> and I think that's where it ends with him getting like double double teamed, uh, for lack of a better term here. <laughs> yeah, in the wall. Oh, and Hasegawa also lives there, but he lives in the doghouse. He does. <laughs> Which, which is with some of the, the the way he talks in the upcoming episodes really makes it fun. Like a lot of the the, the groundwork started here about the way Hasegawa acts is really funny <laughs> with the reveal at the end of certain things. But that's the episode for two thirty nine. How'd you like it, Zen? It was good. It was really funny. These two episodes fucking killed me. I don't know why. I'm a, I'm a I'm a stickler for this kind of humor. Stick was not the right word. I'm a sucker. For this kind of humor, it fucking it kills me, dude. Really? When he is like, I'm gonna go scare them off, and all of them are like, yeah, let's do it. And he's like, <laughs> that shit absolutely killed me. Uh, that was good. Yeah, this was a fantastic start of the episode. I like the the beginning parts where he punches Shimpachi and says, the year's not over. Like, don't you know that for some people, 80% is half of the way done? Because they were they were mm-hmm. celebrating your Gintama being able to survive for how long as it has. And he's like, it's not over till it's over. <laughs> and then it's really funny that they do an episode like this where he has sex with multiple, where it's implied sex with multiple women and men, which is the one thing that would most likely get them fired and removed from their time slot. <laughs> it's a storyline <laughs> like this. That was really good. Uh, the there's so many good bits here where it's just like a lot of characters like going back and forth. Like, I really like the bit when he finally talks to Zenzo, and Zenzo's like, and then you left with uh, Otai, and you were gone for 10 minutes, and you came back with a big grin on your face, and then it was Yagi, and it was another 10 minutes, and then it was Sacha, and it was another 10 minutes, and he keep coming back with his big stupid grin on his face, and then he says, like, and then you left with, Se- well, actually, you didn't leave with Sokoyo, she dragged you away, <laughs> and then he says, when you came back, your tours were closed, and you were crying. <laughs> And he was just, like, in a complete denial. And then he does the Hasegawa bit. He's like, in Hasegawa, I don't know what was going on. You were there for a really long time. Instead of 10 minutes, it was 20 minutes. And then the the end reveal with, um... And then ending with, uh... Oh, shit. I cannot believe I'm, I'm forgetting. Otose. And then it ends with uh, him with Otose. And the entire time, he's just like, oh, god damn it, this sucks. Um... The bit where they're all trying to, like, say the that they slept with him without saying they specifically slept with them was really good. I also really like it because all of them are, like, approaching it in, like, different manners. Like, Otai saying, like, how could you forget this? Yagyu saying, okay, clearly you're the head because of what happened last night. And then Sachan's the only one who just straight up says, you took my virgin. And then, like, she was she got stomped only because runny diarrhea started throwing shit at her face. Like, she was the only one that was about to just straight up say what was going to happen. But she was stopped. And then the, the the 200 million, which comes into play, I think, later when she talks about... I th- no, it's when they're going to go live with her. This comes up later, but that was really good. The bit where he's talking to all of them, my favorite line from there comes from Hasegawa, where he's like, you wouldn't want to be with me because I'm like a failure, right? And then Hasegawa's reaction is, I wouldn't mind falling to the bottom of society with you. Yeah. And he's like, like rubbing his finger on the window. Yeah, really solemnly thinking about spending his life with Mitsuki. <laughs> oh, uh, that's really good. When he's living with them and he's like uh, doing like a bunch of different. First of all, when he says like I'm gonna live with them, and Zenzo says like it's just like strawberry a hundred percent. And then he goes, like, uh, tell me what part of Strawberry 100% had an old lady and a 40-year-old man in it. It's so fuck Strawberry 100%. That's fan service 0%. It's terrible. It's a garbage idea for a manga. Uh, that's good. And then when they go into, when he's living with them, um, and they start living in the crappy apartment. First of all, it's also really funny that Hasegawa has to live in the little doghouse, and he seems perfectly fine with living in the little doghouse. 
at one point he, when he's with uh, Suki, they censor it and they say like specifically because like if you want to do it, do it. With, if you want to do certain things, you're gonna need two hundred million uh, yen. And then she says, "What well, you can do with me?" In the J- Japanese side, they censor it, but then for whatever reason, they didn't censor it in the. Um, translation of it so you actually hear what she says and she says like 200 million i forget the first part but the other two were like if you want to do it between my boobs and the last one if you actually want to do it inside me which i was like holy shit no wonder they censored you yeah my god that's insane (laughs) same for a shot and jump anime that's crazy um and yeah, and then all the bits where they're actually living in the house together, and they're like doing the hot pot bit, like the part where the the fact that the the freak, which I'm I'm sorry that the retainer is now going to be known as this. Ever since that last episode where we're like he's kind of a freak, I can only imagine him as just a straight up freak in it every single time I see him. Yeah, he's just a freak. The, he, the man's a freak at the, all times. The man is a freak, and he shows his freak here when he says like, "Oh yeah, you got." When he says like, "Oh, I'm hungry, give me dinner," and Sequoia is like, oh, "Okay, I guess I can feed you there," and then Kube is like. I don't know where I'm supposed to feed you from. And then he's like, don't worry about it. Just stick it in there. You know what I mean? Put the curry through. <laughs> and he starts doing it. It's so funny when she goes like, oh, you want more? You got it. And she just like starts fucking jamming it in his ass. Yeah, over and just like shoveling it in there. Oh, it's really good. It was a really funny episode. It was uh, all throughout just fantastic. <laughs> really good. And... Yeah, that's all I gotta say, because now we can go on to the next part, which is the end bit of it, which is episode... I was also amazed that this was a two-parter. I was like, there's no fucking way this how is a many, two-parter. How many more sections could they throw in two parts, and it turns yeah, out... Yeah, how could you have more of this? I was surprised with one of the jokes that they got into 40. I was like, there's no way they let you keep your time slot after that one. Even with that gigantic sensor bar, there's no way that you just had that for as brief a moment that you had on screen. That's crazy. Anyway, let's talk about it. Episode 240, which is titled, People Can Only Live by Forgetting the Bad. Go ahead, Zen. So, um, his his plan is terrible, and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just like run away but then he sees the he's like outside talking to zenzo um and they're just talking right in front of hasagawa because they don't care (laughs) they don't like include him in the the group um but then they see the girls they all bump into each other like in the street outside the apartment and they're all like oh what a coincidence that you also live here with your lover but they aren't saying his name and he's like freaking out and they're all like, oh, well, you know, my uh, lover is one of the seven pirate warlords of the sea. <laughs> and all of them say that. They're all like, oh, there could be, he's, mine's also one of the seven pirate warlords of the sea. <laughs> and at some point, uh, he goes like, oh, my God, half the warlords are me. <laughs> and... Uh, so they all decide, you know what, we're gonna go on I'm gonna go on a date with mine tomorrow, uh on, on the seventh. And he's like, Well, I can't fucking take all of them out on the seventh. What am I supposed to do? So he's like trying to convince them all the, to go on a different day, and they all like throw knives at him and almost hit him, except for Sukoyo, who just does hit him like <laughs> several times with the knives. Um uh, and so Zenzo's like, All right, I'm gonna teach you the shadow clone technique and they end up talking through and it's like i think they use that politician whose name they have to bleep again i maybe Uh, because they're bleeping someone's name yeah um and then uh it ends up on a horse and he's like open your eyes you'll be surprised and there's like horse clones of him now (laughs) uh but then he ends up making a bunch of puppets and he's like, yeah, now we can control these puppets with string. And all of the girls show up and take one of the puppet clones instead of him. Even Sukoyo, who taps him on the shoulder and is like, hey, I'm trying to find this guy. And she holds up a picture <laughs> of the puppet. <laughs> um, and so they're at like a planetarium or something. Um, Great date, I assume. Yeah, but then Zenzo's like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom because of my hemorrhoids, because he just always has hemorrhoids. Yeah. Um, And so he leaves all the strings on Gintoki's finger, and he's, like, trying to figure out how to use them, and it's all going to shit, because, like, Ote is, like, ripping one apart, 
Mm-hmm. And then uh, one of, I think the Sachan one explodes and she's like giving it ass to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> yeah, um, he's straight up blowing it out the ass. Yeah. And finally, um, he gets caught because Atose, who's been asleep the whole time, wakes up and says his name. Uh, and they all get mad. And so he's like hanging from a tree. Um, and Zenzo finds him and is like, oh, hey, you want you want a drink? And then he's like, oh, man. And you made it two weeks. That's pretty crazy. And he's like, yeah, well, every day they ended up delivering food and stuff to me to keep me alive. And he like feels bad. And he's like, you know, I was always worried about myself. I didn't think about how this would hurt them. Uh, and he pours the drink out and he's like, I'm never drinking again. And Zenzo's like, wow, that's awesome. You should look inside the bowl. And he does. And it says you've been punked or whatever inside <laughs> the bowl. And it was all a giant plan to get him to promise to stop drinking. Uh, and they're, like, watching it on a videotape. And uh, eventually, he's, like, walking sadly through the streets and, like, ignoring all the bars and stuff. They were trying to get him to come in. Um, but then he bumps into Hasegawa. And Hasegawa's like, oh, I'm drinking to forget. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm never going to forget until I get my revenge. And he's like, no, Kentucky, I wasn't in on that. <laughs> you really <laughs> did bend me over. And then Kentucky like, slowly walks away at the same time. It's like sad anime pace that he was walking at before. Like he just keeps going, but then he like slowly starts picking up into a sprint, and then the episode ends with him begging for alcohol. Yep. So it reveal this episode takes a completely different turn. If every single Hasegawa scene and every single reaction he has, you realize he's not in on the joke, and he's the only. Yeah, one. he's not in on it at all. And he so was- he's like actually hurt. Yeah, so there's a part early on in the beginning where they're talking in front of him, and he says, hey, were you just toying with me this entire time? Yeah, he's like, what? He's so hurt by it, and then you don't see him for the rest of the episode. It's re- it's really well done. They basically buried it. He was the only one he legitimately actually did something with, and he was actually the only one legitimately heard about what happened. Great stuff. This is a fantastic fucking twist if you've ever seen one. It's really good. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and this episode was really good. The 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 bits about with the with the Kentucky dolls, the, the ninjutsu t- t- Kentucky ones are really funny. The the thing that I was surprised in so all of them are doing something different and all the way he has to control them to do all the same time. Um, when one of them has to lift their arm, he says like, Oh, the other ones have to do something different and when it gets to the Sequoia one, he's like, Oh, he's grabbing something and it reveals that what he's grabbing is that the dude next to him's crotch. He just started grabbing his dick. Uh-huh. And then later on when Sachan says, open your mouth so he can eat something, he opens his mouth. And then they go back, they cut back to what the other one's doing <laughs> with the Sequoia one. And it's very, it's it, it's heavily yeah, censored. Yeah, it's blowing the guy. It's straight up blowing the dude. And I was like, holy shit. It's also really funny that uh, the, the Otai one is moving in to like give her a kiss and then it kirby like eats her head oh yeah it like full-on kirby eats her head he's like it's fine i got some time while they think that we're doing something weird over here (laughs) that was really good when uh, sachan's like oh my god gintoki he threw himself in front of the fan (laughs) now he's hurt oh god he's got him he's blowing out he's like i'll save you and she just starts blowing out his ass the entire time Gives him asked to asked about for resuscitation is really good, and then when uh, the doll finally stops blowing the dude and he starts getting near Sequoia instead, the other dude immediately throws it back. He's like, "Hey, can you stop with the hanky panky?" <laughs> like I forget, like Sequoia was getting bothered because like the reason like she no she didn't notice is because it was dark and she didn't see that it was Gintoki was the one that was having was having his way with the dude. I guess though, I guess if they're actually just playing along, she just let I guess get it let it happen or something like that really good bits for all at all all of it like every single step where we think something's not couldn't get worse it just absolutely gets worse in like five different levels <laughs> also it really did like the outside when they show her like ripping it apart and like eating it <laughs> she goes full-on feral to completely destroy yeah, it. yeah she's like bright red eyes and like sharp shark teeth yeah absolutely which is really good um and then i forget with the i think with the what did they do with Kubei? Because I remember the freak gets involved later on, but I don't remember what he did with Kubei. 
It's like he does something that makes him upset, and then like the freak has to get involved. And oh, also... oh, um, he's like, okay, Cube is suspicious because I'm not talking. So he ends up hitting like buttons on this controller that uses pre-recorded lines, and the pre-recorded line says that he was comparing her beauty to the North Star, but then he remembers she has hemorrhoids or something like that. <laughs> That's right. And then she gets mad and kicks it, and she kicks the doll so hard that it like flies into the air. Yes, and then he was getting angry because he was saying like, "Have you seen her hemorrhoids?" Yeah. Have you seen? Yeah, them? he the freak guy goes. What do you mean she has hemorrhoids and you've seen them? <laughs> that's what it was. I remember it was something freaky. That that gets good. I like when Zenzo comes back and he's like, "Hey, I'm back from the bathroom." And then Kentucky said that was a long ass bathroom trip, and he goes, "Yeah, I have hemorrhoids." <laughs> and he gets real bad. <laughs> That's really good, which is obviously the answer is, is like he just left him alone because he was working on this punk punk plot the entire time. Um, and then the bit where he's showing it and when they're seeing it again because they freeze frame it on like the crazy face, then everyone reveals oh they like they reveal what actually happened that night, which is that he just wrecked the bar, and then they reveal like actually it wasn't just him, Sequoia, you were also helping wreck the bar. <laughs> because you also get when she gets drunk, you can't control anything that she's doing, so she, they like show her actually him. Uh, helping him destroy everything, which is probably why he got all destroyed. Is <laughs> he started crying because she started getting uh, even crazier than he was, and he got hurt. And that's how the way it went for him. Um, and then uh, right before they cut away from it, Shimpachi goes, uh, he goes like, "I want someone." Says, Kagura says like, "I want to see that again." And then Shimpachi goes like, "Oh, Kagura, you can't just repeat it. It's gonna lose its fine." And then he immediately starts busting out laughing <laughs> when he sees the face, and they see they punked him uh, real good. And yeah, real good. I forgot there was another good bit here with Hasegawa. It was in the previous episode, but I liked it. But they, when they show up to go drinking, they say the man with the sunglasses will work off the bill. And then his reaction is, yes, I have a job. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yay, I have a job. Yes, yeah, so broken is this man <laughs> that they're just like, oh, yeah, man, I got a job now. <laughs> Sweet. So yeah, real good. How'd you feel about it, Zen? Uh, real funny. It was real good uh the it wasn't as funny as the last one i think the humor style of the last one was funnier to me but um still really funny still had a good time yeah that one had a, a more fun kind of like um like the, it's very funny because when i think about it, it's like the anime version of like a sitcom episode where the episode is like this person is trying to hide the fact that he has two girlfriends except for now it's gone to where the man has like five girlfriends and hasagawa at the same time. <laughs> I also like when he's talking to each of them. Um, and he's like, oh god, what am I going to do? And then he gets to Sahachan, and he's like, you know, I can probably just ignore her. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, he does say that. He's like, you know what? Yeah. I can probably just ignore her, not, not visit. There's also the one with Kyubei where he says, like, how many days can I spend with her? And he's she's like, I just need you to be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and... He's like, uh, you don't have to be here all the time, but, you know, certain days would be good. And he goes like, and then the freak comes in. He goes, I got it. She'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He's like, whoa, whoa, who, whoa, who the hell invited you here? <laughs> Nobody. I didn't. <laughs> this is between me and her. And then, yeah, when, um, when he's trying to talk them all out of the date on the 7th, um, the freak dude is like, fine, I'll leave, but only if you take her on a date on the 7th. And Gintoki's like, oh my god, are you still here? <laughs> are you still here? The freak, you can't get rid of the freak that easy. He's just you always You can't get rid of the freak. It. No. He's ready for it. But yeah, there you go. That was episode 240. Fantastic tiny arc we got there. So let's move on to the next episode, which is another uh, tiny two-episode arc one, which is episode 241. We are all hosts in capital letters. Go ahead, Zen. All right, 241. So they're invited over to the host club, like the male host club with that guy who um, yeah. like left home and left his mom or whatever. Like the, He's the really famous one that everyone loves. Taka Magahara. Um, I can never pronounce his name correctly. <laughs> we'll call so, him yeah, Taka. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and there is this uh, woman called the Madam, uh, and they're scared that she's going to come and ruin their club, so they need help to, like, make it 
look good, but all the hosts are too afraid of her to come in. So he hires the Odd Jobs crew to come in and be hosts. And it's where my favorite Gintama gif comes from, where it's Gintoki in the white suit where he does the spin and the point. Yes. Um, very funny. I, I had one of those SpongeBob moments where you like you point at the screen. And it's, it's <laughs> in the Holy um, shit. Funny enough, I had the same yeah. thing with this episode because a friend of mine actually showed me the the next episode, the Vegeta conversation years ago. Uh, he showed it to me as a way of saying like, "Yo, check out Gintama." I said, "If I ever reach two hundred fifty something, I'll let you know." And then today he sent me a message saying, "Oh man, I remember when I sent you that." I'm like, he's been waiting this entire moment for this day. Sorry, continue on. Uh, so they're like, okay, we'll, we'll get a group together and we'll take over as the hosts. Um, and they end up getting uh, Otai, and they're like, we just need you to pretend you're... the only. Di- there's not really any difference between being a hostess and a host anyway, so we just need you to pretend. And she gets really pissed off, uh, but then Kondo shows up and he's like, yeah... I'll be your your number one host stalker. Uh, and then Kentucky's like, oh, he's a host car. I don't, I don't know how he confused stalker for car, but they decided that he was a car. And so they put, like, wheels in his hands, and they're, like, riding him around. Um, and then uh, Hasegawa is there in his, like, cardboard outfit, which ends up collapsing as well. And then... Um, all of this is like a just Gintoki causing problems so he can talk to one of these girls. Because uh, he wants to like be the super host and he's like doing all the... What does he say? He spins and he points directly at the camera. And he says like, just do it. Or something like, like yeah, that just, in English. Just do it. Yeah, it's really funny. It's really good. Fucking killed me. Um... And then the the other uh, Shinsengumi all arrive, and they decide that Hijikata and Okita should also be hosts. Uh, and the madam is very close, so they're like in panic mode. Um, and so it goes like, "Oh wait, this is awesome because all I have to do is trick stupid women into buying me things." <laughs> in in the um, translation, they said "stupid bitches." <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah, and then uh, it turns out that Ty invited the cross-dressers to the, to the club. Because she was like, oh, I thought you wanted it lively, so I invited some people. And it's like all of the, the cross-dressing group. Yeah. And then also invites the, uh, the others from... Why am I blanking on their name right now? Yoshiwara, that's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think they, they're like, oh, Sukoyo's already drunk. How did that even happen? Yes, yes, and they were invited. Um, I don't, I don't remember if that actually is the start of the next episode or this one, though. I think it. I think it is the start of the next episode because I think this one ends with all the people that got invited. Okay. okay. Uh, gotcha. Coming in. Yeah, that would make sense as like a, a one that shows up here. Um. All right, then let's go. Let's start making this one. I like that. There's first of all, there's a new OP and a new ED for this one as well. Uh, the new OP uh, and ED. How do you feel about them, Zen? Uh, I like them. I think they're both good. Yeah. Uh, the OP, it's hard to replace the last one, but I think the song in it is, is really good. Yes, it is very good. I really like the the, the the like the feeling of the ED. You know, it's a good 240 plus episode ED because it shows like literally every side character that has ever been in the show, like to an insane degree. Like it's got dudes there that were there for one episode. This It's got ugly Gintoki and ugly Otai from that one episode. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a really, really nice night. It's a very cool vibes. as a, like a good like look back of going like, man, remember all these <laughs> dudes, all these silly moments. Fantastic for that, and the OP seems like a pretty good uh, setting up for it as well. Looking forward to seeing uh, it being used in the big arc <laughs> for it. Uh, some other stuff I liked. Um, I really like that when they're looking for hosts. That when they go to get Hasegawa. 
he shows up and his fucking song starts playing. <laughs> his like I'm a broke I'm a broke man uh song. I forget what it's actually called. But it's, <laughs> it's the one that he had that one special where they played it for like eight minutes <laughs> straight. It was really long. Uh, and when he shows up, he has that song playing, and then they say, like, oh, my God, are you the cardboard saint? And they start talking about, like, this is cardboard, right? And he goes, like, no, it's not cardboard. It's, like, <laughs> it's like cardboard looking, but it's not actually cardboard, which makes it seem like he could not actually afford real cardboard to make his cardboard suit out of, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I like that bit where Gintoki's actually dressed up, and he's doing, like, the English, uh... He's talking in English like like you said the just do it, <laughs> which is really good. That shit was so funny. It is. Uh, he looks really good in that suit as well. Kondo as him saying like I'm gonna be your host stalker. I'm gonna be the, for you, and then him somehow to turn that into I'm gonna be a car actually. And they start doing like this bit to try and get like because like you need to work as a team if you're gonna be as a host together. And they start using everyone, and Gintoki is actually able to get a girl basically to enter the establishment and they think like oh my god their dumbass idea actually worked and then it all gets ruined when he's like come join me in this car and he drives condo <laughs> and he's like on his crotch he's like it's a comfortable ride let's walk <laughs> let's go and she when the shinsengumi run him over she's immediately like police help and then there's also a really good bit with Kondo where he's talking about, like, uh, Kentucky's like, we had that girl in the bag if it wasn't for the stupid police. And then Kondo's like, yeah, stupid police. They got such a tight-ass wad. Fucking, ruin every, fucking ruining everyone's good times. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then Ijikata mentions, like, you're the leader. You're our dude. He's like, you shouldn't be a host car. You should go be a squad car or something. Get out of here, Kondo. <laughs> um... I also like that uh, when they get Hijikata and uh, Okita to join up with the host stuff, they also start making fun of the fact that, like, Hijikata goes like, oh, yeah, Hijikata would do great. He's like, ah, he's not that great. He's like, actually, if you just give Gintoki black hair, him and Hijikata look almost exactly the same. <laughs> and then they do a bit where they actually did give him black hair, and, he, and when he's yelling, he does look a lot like Hijikata. <laughs> And yeah, that bit where they show Okita with the other women and it reveals... I forget, he's after he says, like, oh yeah, just stupid women fall for this. And then he talks to the women he's like, but I didn't mean you, baby. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, but not you. <laughs> but not you, man. <laughs> no, why don't you go ahead and buy yourself some more of the <laughs> expensive alcohol? And I, yeah, I like seeing the cross-dressers return as well. It was really nice seeing them back, especially because they absolutely love this dude, uh... Taka Magahara, like that was the same bit when they got in line to all die to him <laughs> when it was the last arc. They absolutely love him, so it makes sense for them to be brought in here as well. So yeah, I ended up liking it. How did you feel about it, Zen? It was good. It was good. Uh, the, the previous episodes I liked a little bit more, um, but it was good. Yeah, understandable. Now let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 242, which the most contentious title ever, Girls Like Vegeta, Guys Like Piccolo. Go ahead, Zen, tell us what it's about. So, uh, they are eventually like, alright, we're gonna, we're gonna get out of here, um, but then, so that's when, yeah, Sequoia shows up, uh, and is shwasted, and is like, I want, I want, um, Kintoki is my host. Um, <laughs> and then Ote's like, oh, you see, it's it's like the Yoshiwara, but it's for, it's for ladies to come to. Uh, that's like the explanation. And so Sequoia's like, so that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> um, he ends up being uh, popular because Sachan shows up and it's like, I want him too. But then um, Sogo like, wins her over. But they're like fighting the whole time. Like, um, he's got her, like, dangling from the roof, but they're, like, screaming at each other <laughs> the whole time they're doing it. Um, eventually, everyone is like, all right, all right, all right, we gotta calm down. We gotta fucking calm down. And um, they, they turn it into a conversation about Dragon Ball. And, um, or no, the, the, the madam shows up first, I think, and everyone's being, like, bitchy to her. 
Um, I think they say that her hair looks like shit, and so they're trying to, like, clean it off of her face yeah, with a napkin. They, they were trying to sneak off in the back with her, and then all the drunkards immediately, like, Sequoia with her a fucking amazing throwing arm just knocks all three of them with a kunai straight to the head. And that's when she noticed them and starts saying, like, oh, yeah, they're all drunk, and they're like, you got some shit on you. <laughs> you we need to take this off. Yeah, and everyone comes, like, even Otai's like, oh, you gotta wet the towel first. That's why it's not coming off. Um, and so then they shift it to a conversation about Dragon Ball um, but then like the girls start getting really serious in it like like really serious about it mm-hmm. um, and the madam is like oh I-, I like Vegeta and then everyone, all the girls start shitting on Vegeta <laughs> and Kiba's like yeah Piccolo's better um, and then Sogo shows up and is trying to like win everyone over and then they start like continually getting hit with bottles like every every time uh i think it's it's kitoki and um hijikata and every time one of them says something one of the girls hits them with like shatters a bottle over their head and every time they do it gintoki lets out like this most panicked laugh (laughs) it's really funny uh i think because gintoki's uh hijikata's like oh yeah my favorite dragon ball character is uh Yamcha's little little buddy, and Oolong. Yeah, he Ote says just Oolong. screams. It's Poir. It smashes <laughs> a fucking bottle over his head. Um, but then it, eventually it winds down, and the madam was like, "Actually, I wanted to come again because I just had a good time. Um, and I had a good time again, and I want to come back again." And he's like, "All right, well, why don't you why don't you come back?" It's, that's pretty much the end. It's like, "Well, you should come back again." Yes, and that's where it ends. So there, she also has like a little sad story as well attached to it. But at the end, through their through complete random happenstance, they're able to save the day, even though they were acting like a bunch of assholes through the entirety of it. Uh. So yeah, this episode. How'd you feel about it, Zen? Uh, it was fine. Um, the bits that were funny were really funny. The bits that weren't funny were, were like I was dozing off in my chair a little bit it, it, it was very hit or miss for me um like i didn't even think the dragon ball jokes were that funny because it was just it was borderline like i know about dragon ball isn't that funny like kind of jokes yeah but I mean, uh, they, they did a very accurate representation of what it's like to say i like vegeta and which is yes, that the immediate they, they response did. is to get shit on completely <laughs> But um, Otai breaking the bottle over Hichikata's head for not saying Far's name is maybe one of my funniest <laughs> like moments in the entire series. Like I was dying. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, I can see that. I ended up really uh, liking this one. Similar to that, the, the the this is definitely his saying his way of saying, "Man, I really like Dragon Ball." Which <laughs> he goes into like full like to the point where there's a re- there's a real good bit where I think they start talking about like. I think they say something negative about Dragon Ball, and then uh, Yagyu fucking hits Gintoki on top of the head and says, put yourself in Toriyama's shoes, feel like he feels yeah. about the situation. <laughs> That's real good. When they're talking about their favorite characters, Sachan's being fucking King F- Furry for whatever reason <laughs> is maybe one of the most random ones. And then uh, Sequoia also saying the King of King Castle, which I don't know. Is she talking about um, Ox King? I was trying to think of this. I like think you, so, yeah. I think you would know more because, like, I the only king that I would think of of King King Castle would be Ox King. I can't think of anything else. It actually kind of reminds me. Because they don't, doesn't he go to the castle in one of the movies? It might be. Maybe it's that. And it's the Ox King's castle, and he's, like, small, and he's trying to, to get the fan out because he needs the Bancho fan or whatever it's called. Yeah, that might be it. It might be that might be who she's talking about. Which, if it is, that's a big ups for a lot of big dudes. It's her her favorite is Ox King. <laughs> big ups for everyone out there. Let's go. Um, and yeah, I also like that there was a <laughs> the 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 lengths that they go on. The shit Vegeta is kind of amazing. Uh, as me and you have been known this for a while, we are connoisseurs of shitting on Vegeta because it was Penta's favorite character. Still is Penta's favorite character. And we know plenty of people who love uh, Vegeta. And when we were doing the Dokkan stuff, we certainly always... <laughs> I don't know what it is about Vegeta fans specifically. Maybe it is just a simple fact of like the Vegeta is so easy to put down 
that it makes it fun, but I don't know. I really liked a lot of that stuff, the way that they were talking about, like, man, the only time he cried is when he was getting his ass whooped by Frieza. <laughs> what a loser. He looked bad in the Batman t-shirt. <laughs> Just full on uh, destroying him. And then Hijikata even does the little Vegeta like <laughs> the by the trunks. And then they immediately start attacking. He's like, oh, they didn't like it at all. <laughs> they didn't think it was a very good reference. Uh, it started to destroy him. Uh, I like the bit where there's a bit we didn't mention him, but he is in this one. The freak is in this episode as well. Because when Kaguya, uh, when Kyubei was showing the freak. up, the freak, <laughs> I'm sorry that his name is no longer what it is. It's it's the freak now. But Kyubei, uh was showing up and she's like, well, you only wanted me to bring girls. So I had to, it took a while for me to find the girls. And it's just all her dudes dressed up in cross dress as the same. And that includes the freak who is there in his uh, female equivalent, which is was in a couple episodes way back in the day when she said that she was in a soap land. Uh, and then in this specific case, for no reason, he did Cuba said specifically, I just need you to look like a girl. He didn't, he chose to say that he came from a soap plan. <laughs> Two completely different things that he tried to like buy off, uh, Sequoia before they eventually kicked him out of the establishment and said, it's not that kind of place, buddy. Get your freak ass out of here. <laughs> Uh, that was really good. And then when they start all fighting each other is really good because but they all get broken up by the three of them. And they say like, oh man, they were like instantly, like they stopped messing around and just left. Those are the actual three monsters of the place. And then they were the ones who obviously stood around for the madam. And yeah, I liked it when they did the champagne tower. It was like, oh yeah, we're going to give these women tequila and we're going to knock them out. And can't <laughs> Okita and Hijikata take like one swig and they're like fucking knocked out. And then they cut to the girls and they're like, oh yeah, we're, this is fine. Keep them coming. It goes like, the man was like, would you like any more? He's like, no, I'm fine. Thank you. And she has like over a hundred of them right next to her. He's like, how did you even find the time to drink all of them? <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, it ended up being a perfectly fine episode as they, the madam talks about like, oh yeah, I, I just don't have any friends and I don't have a place to call my own. And then he goes like, hey man. I want you to be happy. Come to my establishment. You got friends here. And then when they do like the, the heartfelt moment when they open the doors to reveal her friends, Gintoki's just like vomiting still from the tequila. <laughs> Which is really good. And I thought it was, I feel like that's a good way of sending off a heartfelt message of Gintama of saying, hey, you belong to our weirdo bunch of family. And also our MC is vomiting all over the place. <laughs> Welcome to the Gintama crew. <laughs> So, yeah, very nice. Uh, there's also some pretty good host bits here. The only reason I know anything about hosts is because of the Yakuza series. <laughs> and, <laughs> and one of my favorite jokes in here is that the, all of the host names are just the characters' names, but in capital letters. So Gintoki's is Gin, and uh, Hichikata's is Toshi, and Okita's is Sogo. <laughs> it's really good. It's a fine attention to detail to uh, host club stuff. <laughs> but that was episode 242. Well, let's move on to episode 243, which is titled Draw Your Life on the Canvas We Call Manga. Go ahead, Zen. So one of the Shonen Jump editors, I don't know if it's the same one from the other episodes because I don't remember who the other one was. This but is it, the new it's one. another one of those. This it's is a new the, guy. This okay. is the new one because they show in prison what happened to the other old ones. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember that part. Um, they they are there, and it's a new guy working on Gintaman. Still, it's still somehow still being made. They say eight years um, running strong for some reason. Yeah, uh, and he's like, I really don't want to work on Gintaman because every time someone does, they have like a. I think he calls it a, like a death sentence. It's like a sealing his fate mm -hmm. um, because they all have like a panic attack. Uh, so he's like trying to figure out a new way to do it, and so they get. Um, a, a prisoner uh and it, is it is it the same torn sleeves guy because he has torn sleeves yep, it's him is it shachi it, is a torn sleeve shachi yeah it sure <laughs> is prisoner number three, yeah. three zero one six is shachi torn sleeve shachi um and so they're trying to, to figure it out and then uh they're like to work to figure out how to make the manga not boring anymore because i think it's too boring is the problem um and then they're like oh Shachi's partner is here, and it's partner's Gintoki. 
<laughs> um, and then they're a, a mangaka duo that are trying to get a new manga pushed. Um, and they're like, oh, well, part of the problem is all the, all the sleeves are torn off on everyone's <laughs> clothes. And then everyone has, uh, like, shoulder pads instead, and it's just, like, it's not, not good. Um, and they're like, all right, let's look at some of the, let's look at some of the um, sketches. And Shachi is, like, actually pretty good at it. <laughs> it's, like, uh, decent, and Gintoki's is awful. And he's like, well, why don't you guys have Gintoki do the, the story work, and Shachi does the artwork? And they uh, put in a new manuscript and they like go through it and they're like doing part of the episode through like manga panels of, of like their shitty drawings um and then it ends up becoming a harem series in prison i think it's like a prison harem manga yeah, yeah um, that, that was the original pitch for it was a prison harem and then when he gets it back he sees that they he's completely changed it because now kentucky's in charge of writing it and now it's something yeah, called yeah. Chage no f- Note. Chage Note. Uh, and then the, the 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 editor ends up in uh, an asylum, just like all the others. So his his belief was correct that it was going to end up being his, his, the end of him. Yeah. And then the best part of this episode, they actually animate the shitty manga that they made. <laughs> Into a real ass anime episode, including all the mistakes that they put into it, and then it ends with um, them with giant shoulder pads, and it says the end. <laughs> oh man, uh, how'd you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, it was okay. Um, it, 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 I don't know. It wore kind of long for me because the other like- ones were very like joke focused and this one was kind of like it still was but it was kind of slow with it and this, this one i feel like you was, really have to give a shit about a lot of like the intricacies of like manga creation. yeah it's very much like a hey look at this the man- isn't manga cool kind of thing um yeah it was okay yeah. i mean i like manga but even i was like damn this is a lot it's it is a lot as they talk about the funny thing is is that as someone who's actually gone through the design process of like trying to say like hey i think it should be like this and then getting editors notes back and stuff like this i was like this shit is hilarious to me because of how stupid accurate a lot of the design changes on characters is to the point of like um a lot of it is, like, like a, a good example of it is when he's talking about, like, oh, do you have, like, a character description? Or, like, do you have, like, the, the sheet of it? And they show it for one of the characters, and they put all the details into the girl's shoulder pads. <laughs> Where they're like, oh, yeah, the character, like, the, the, the art of the character is, like, whatever. And then they go into, like, oh, this one uh, on the right shoulder pad, the first one is, like, a minigun that she can only shoot people from the right. And then below it is, like, a... I think it was, like, a flamethrower or something. And then on the other shoulder pad, she has a taser gun, right? And it goes, like, on the last one to show that she's still a woman, we gave her, like, a brush. She really cares about the way she looks. And he's like, the design doc for this character is insane. They spent all their time on the fucking shoulder pads and nothing else. And he goes, like, I don't know how to tell them that in their specific design pitch... The shoulder pads are the problem, and they spent so much time working, workshopping the shoulder pads that I feel bad telling them that the shoulder pads just aren't working for me. <laughs> it's so funny because I was like, holy shit, I know what, the th- I know that feeling. <laughs> when you put like so much effort into like the most dumbest of dumbness, and it's really good because it's also a very amateur thing of like, oh, I'm going to focus so, it's like that joke you see all the time on Twitter where it's like, in my head the a specific fight scene or like a specific lore drop of a character and then like the unfinished parts of it, it's like the a beautiful road right in the middle and then the other two parts of like okay the things i've actually written and it's like completely undone like it's very clear that the idea that they had they had one singular idea and then did not actually follow through on any of the other things which is really funny to me um also the bit about gintoki about i think like uh Shachi just absolutely loves Gintoki, and he's unable to realize that the 
thing holding him back is actually Gintoki. Because Gintoki yeah. is the one who made the worst art. His art was perfectly fine when he did it firsthand. It looked like a legitimate manga piece when he did it. And when they show the Gintoki version, it's like that drawing of a horse where the horse is like beautiful on one end and then like a fucked up <laughs> drawing at the other. That's what it looked like looking back at him. Um, when Gintoki gets put in charge of the story, it all comes completely down uh some of the best bits in it is like at the part of it he just started doing math on the pages and like they actually show him like <laughs> while he's while the editor's reading it gintoki's doing math in the background and then at some point they start using it as a way to like convey messages to each other where gintoki's like oh yeah i need to go to the store and get this and kagura's like make sure you get this kind of meat he's like please don't use the actual like message <laughs> you're using the story to tell uh leaving notes for each other and then Shibachi's like, hey, by the way, um, Atose showed up and she's really looking for the rent this month. And then the manga actually ends with Atose leaving a note saying like, hey, Kendoki, I've confiscated your furniture. Um, don't come back. <laughs> and that's how it ends. And when they actually do the anime, they do a full on redemption. Uh, they do all that. and It's really um, it's really good. But yeah, like you said, I think this would probably have been better as like a 12 minute episode. <laughs> maybe condense some of the ideas keep some of the better ones and kind of keep it flowing through because they do spend a lot of time talking about the specific design uh inertias of something and it definitely feels like it's written for like this is going to be really great for specific people who know what they're going for and then for everyone else you're just kind of picking apart and going oh i get that reference i get that i get that <laughs> Like, there's a really funny, like, little design thing where when they're showing the shoulder pads, when they say, like, oh, it can be removed off, when they show it at the bottom, it's actually a reference to Saint Seiya, because in Saint Seiya, the way that they carry around their armor is actually in, like, a little box thing, and when they show the, um, the shoulder pads, <laughs> they're in a little box thing, too, and they never actually make a reference to it, they just say, like, oh my god, this, this thing just looks like complete garbage, it's so bad. Uh, there is also a little panel of uh, someone, when he's complaining about, like, Jump Today, it made me really laugh because it reminded me of everyone talking shit on Twitter where it's like, does no one actually make up their own ideas? And one of the pitches he got was someone who looks a lot like Goku <laughs> dressed up like yeah. Naruto. <laughs> In Naruto's outfit. Yeah. Yeah, with Vegeta, Piccolo. I think, like, Piccolo kind of looks like a com combination of him and, like, uh, Hisoka from His Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter really funny and then vegeta's on there tn's on there except for tn has six eyes instead of three uh very a very funny bit and then there's also a part where he says these dangerous criminals can't draw shonen manga which if only shonen jump actually followed through with some of their ideas on that it ended up being an accidental like damn you're right that's why you should get rid of some of them <laughs> maybe don't get them in there but to be fair some of them were at least kicked out when they were immediately found for their crimes <laughs> anyway uh that was this one and then it also ends with like a little trailer for the next arc which is going to be the thorny arc which looks interesting so that was episode 243 and that's another five episodes down we did it we made the week somehow <laughs> uh we should yeah we, we made it yeah just barely we i had to push it back because work tried to stop this but <laughs> we were able to get it done thank god next week though uh next week we will be doing the thorny arc which is four episodes thank god <laughs> so it will be easier for us to do it will be episodes 244 to 247 and then after that it is going to be another five episodes that are going to be one-offs and then after that it's another new arc and then from there, we enter Arc Town, because I think everything after that is basically tiny arcs until, like, a tiny episode that will be effectively the end of Gintama for a while, but it's okay. We weren't there at the time, so we're not going to miss out on the, like, long gap of no episodes being yeah, released. No time skip for us, baby. No. So the last episode, which is in this batch, is 265, which was, its air date was... March 2013. The next episode doesn't start till April 8th, 2015. It was a two-year gap. <laughs> um, so we'll be going back there, and we'll get there, and then I think from then on, it's going to be a... 
we're getting yeah we're getting real close to the end of all things as we have said every single time it really isn't that much more episodes from then on um i think we are i think we're actually no we're not okay we're we're good i was gonna say i think we made it at the point where there's only 100 episodes left and it is not there yet but we're we're getting there once we hit the 100 episode mark it means in theory there are only 10 episodes left of shonen archive for gintama which actually that's not 100 percent accurate because we still need to do the movie and then the final arc is also a movie <laughs> and then there's some other stuff that we need to clear up before it ends so don't worry about it too much there'll be more Gintama, gintama stuff to talk about while we can <laughs> ah but anyway that's what it's looking like for next week and speaking of it's time to do some cleanup so as always if you want to follow zen and see more zen stuff you can go over to Zen's channel, where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks Shonen Jump stuff. Uh, crazy stuff is potentially happening that we can't talk about in Shonen Jump, Zen. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have to, yeah, we we have have to, to keep, it, keep it close. Yeah, keep it lock and key. But we will say, I think you can thank us for this. Is it a coincidence that after we talked about Sakamoto Days not having anime confirmed... It was confirmed not long after that, and then Kentucky's VA was is going to be playing Sakamoto. Think about it. You can thank us. <laughs> that was us. Unless it's bad. In which case, don't blame us. <laughs> but it does feel like a weird coincidence that Sakamoto got his VA announced, and it was literally the same one who does. I mean, to be fair, he's a really good VA, and he does plenty of good voice, act, voice acting, but it's funny that he's also uh, Gintoki as well. <laughs> So, plenty of more stuff, fun stuff to go in. So, you can go to Zen's channel to hear him talk about spoiler stuff for it. I need to catch up with Sakamoto Days. I think I've said this last time, too. But yes, I just you do. Don't, I don't have enough time in the day. I'm still barreling through um, Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> no that's, time. That's fair. Yeah. Clock's ticking. The clock is ticking. I don't have much time. And especially with the F F Go anniversary coming up in, like, another five weeks or so. Uh, there's no time in the world left anymore. Uh, but anyway, if you want some more me stuff, you can go to my channel, uh, where I do stuff. I read story things now where I, I do you don't hear it in the, the finished end, but if you ever were interested in the Fago story, you can hear me, uh, talk, read it, read it to you because plenty of people skip the story because they don't have time because the ghost story is like legitimately like a, this is going to take me a couple hours to read. <laughs> I think I'm like on, I'm not even 20% done with the most recent chapter in terms of recording it for stuff. And I want to say it's already over two hours long in terms of what I've said. Let me double check on that one because I can actually check. Uh, yeah, it's two hours so far and I'm nowhere close to being done. I'm not even at the halfway point <laughs> of the story. <laughs> So I really, the, the, I, you can see there's plenty of people who skip it and then they want to know what happens, but they don't, they don't have the time to sit down and read. So instead they'll listen to me, not as good, read about it, but at least it's better than nothing. <laughs> oh man. And I'll make sure to release some other stuff. I need to remember to, uh, it's just that I've been so busy with, uh, trying to get Final Fantasy 14. And then I've also, uh, have been training up in Street Fighter 6 now, um, because I played oh, nice. against, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. I played against Neo recently, and uh, Neo has been playing that game for I think 400 hours, and it shows. So yeah, he's been putting work in. He's been he's been putting 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 in the work, and that was making me go like, okay, well now, I have I think a goal here because when I left off here, we could go maybe 50 50. It ain't 50 50 no more. <laughs> that 50 50 left about maybe 100 hours ago. <laughs> It is now very clearly he will beat me almost every single time unless I get better. So that's something to strive for. And unfortunately, I don't record any of those videos. Uh, I still play Master Duel and stuff like that. So there's plenty of stuff I just do that I just don't record. Just know that I'm doing stuff. <laughs> if you don't see it, that or I'm working, whichever one. But anyway, I'll make sure to try and release some more stuff. We're getting, I'm, I'm about to get into some pretty busy season as I try and prepare for a lot of stuff. Uh, fun times then. And that's the end of Shonen Archive. As, as always, if you want to show support for the show, the best way of doing that 
is to leave a like or comment, but you can never have you never have to worry about the show going anywhere. As long as I remember it and Zen remembers it, there will always be episodes of Shonen Archive. And any of the big channel stuff will always be carried by Freak Band Order. So no issues on that part. And now finally, it's time to end the show. So Zen, why don't you say goodbye? Goodbye everybody.